now let us look at the first uh, scheduling algorithm which is the first come first sir we are going to study fcfs which is first come first come first serve and this fcfs algorithm works only in non preemptive environment non preemptive environment or you can say non preemption there is no preemption in case of fcfs now see fcfs is one of the easiest algorithm to understand it is also one of the easiest algorithm to implement at the same time because just to implement fcfs we don't have to do anything we just have to maintain a queue and that queue is going to maintain at what time the processes arrived and according to the arrival time of the processes we are going to schedule those processes inside the cpu so let us assume these are the process ids these are the arrival times and this is the burst time of the processes processes which we have is p0 p1 p2 p3 and p4 arrival times of these processes are 0 2 1 4 3 and the burst time of the processes are 5 1 2 3 and 4 assume this is the given data which we have now by using this data our aim is to find the completion time of these processes then we are going to find the turnaround time and then we are going to find the bus uh, waiting time we are going to find the waiting time right see in any of the scheduling algorithm whether it is fcfs whether it is shortest job first or uh, longest job first or we have this round robin algorithm or highest response ratio next algorithm in any of these algorithms our main aim is to minimize the waiting time because if we can minimize the waiting time of every process then we can complete more tasks per unit time if you can complete more tasks per unit time then you will feel that your system is fast because you are completing or you are finishing more processes every time and your overall throughput of the system is more okay throughput is the number of tasks completed per unit time so here we are going to make something called as a gantt chart this is representing the gantt chart g a n t t c h a r t the gantt chart and it is from time zero see i have given this burst time and arrival time relatively that means if the process p0 arrived at time 0 then the process p2 arrived at time 2 and this is a relative time or you can see you can say you can give this time in, in terms of milliseconds also in some books they have given this time for example burst time and arrival time exa exact duration of time or uh, uh, you can assume it as in milliseconds or seconds or nanoseconds and so on but right now i'm going to assume that uh, this arrival time is in per unit time it, it is just a unit time but for simplicity for yourself you can assume that this is given in milliseconds okay so at time zero only one process arrived in the ready queue and at that time cpu was available therefore we are going to schedule this process p0 inside the cpu and p0 will execute inside the cpu so we are going to give the cpu to p0 at time zero and it will finish at time five after that the second process which arrived in the cpu is p2 we are going to give the cpu to these processes according to their arrival time if a process arrived first then we are going to give it the cpu if, if the process arrived later then we are going to give it cpu at later point of time so you can see the cpu is allocated according to the arrival time of the processes so the p2 process arrived after p0 you can clearly see it arrived after p0 so we are going to allocate cpu to the p2 process and p2 process uh, it will be there in the CPU for two units of time, so it will be finishing at time seven. The next process which is arriving in the CPU is P1 process. So P1 process is there. So P1 process, uh, the burst time is uh, one. Therefore, it will be there in the, in, there in the CPU till time eight. Then the next process which is arriving is P4 process. So P4 process was, will be there in the CPU for four units of time. So it will be finishing at time 12. And then uh, P3 process arrived in the CPU at time 4. It will be there, there, at, uh, it will be there uh, for three units of time. So it will be finishing at time 15. See, this arrival time actually means that when I'm saying arrival time, uh, arrival time is a time at which the process is arrived in the ready queue 
processes arriving at the ready queue does not uh, mean that they are they are having lower process id it may happen that some processes created earlier some processes created <coughs> later but uh, the time at which they arrived in the ready queue depends on your long term scheduler that how it is going to bring the processes in the cpu okay so here you can see the process p1 p2 p3 p4 this this is denoting the process id the process id is given when you are creating the processes but the arrival time is given or is based on your long term scheduler that out of those processes which are available in the job pool or after those processes which are available to execute which to which process you are going to bring uh, that process uh, out of those processes you are going to bring which process to the cpu okay so here you can see the process p0 got the cpu at time 0 and it finished at time 5 therefore the completion time of process p0 is 5 <laughs> now the process p2 uh, was uh, arrived at time 1 but it completed at time 7 therefore the completion time of process p2 is 7 then the process p1 completed at time 8 completed at time 8 then the process p3 completed at time 15 and the process p4 completed at time 12 completed at time 12 So after this, the turnaround time. Turnaround time means that for how long the process was there inside the system. Say so, right. So turnaround time is basically completion time minus arrival time. Completion time minus arrival time. It is same like that. You are going to a bank, and you thought that uh, you you uh, you you entered the bank at 10 a.m. in the morning, and you finished your task at 3 p.m. in the evening. right so in total how how, how long you were, you uh, you were there in the bank so it is 10 to 11 then 12 then 1 then 2 then 3 that means you you were there in the bank for 5 hours right so in the same way when i'm saying the turnaround time turnaround time that uh, from the arrival time to the completion time what is the total duration of time for which the system processes were there in the system so here for the first process p0 the completion time is 5 and the arrival time is 0 therefore the p0 process was there in the system for 5 units of time for the process p1 the completion time is 8 the arrival time is 2 therefore it was there in the system for 6 units of time the process p2 was there in the system for 6 units of time the process p3 was there in the system for 11 units of time and the process p4 was there in the system for 9 units of time and then what is the waiting time so waiting time is for example you entered the bank at 10 am in the morning you ex you are exiting the bank at 3 pm in the evening but for how long you have actually uh, done your something meaningful or some some kind of meaningful task for example you just have to deposit the money for just depositing the money it will it may take for example maximum 5 minutes then for 4 hours and 55 minutes you were waiting to deposit the money right so it is just when i'm saying waiting time that means the total time for which this process was in the system and for from 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 the total time how long the process was doing some meaningful task for example the meaningful task here is the burst time that means the time for which this process executed in the system cpu and then the remaining time is the waiting time that for for long how long the process was waiting there in the system so you can say the waiting time is generally turnaround time minus the burst time turnaround time minus the burst time so turnaround time the process p1 is 5 and the burst time is 5 that means 5 minus 5 is 0 so p0 do not have to wait to uh, you know finish its task when it came into the system then if you discuss about the p1 then the turnaround time of p1 is 6 and the burst time is 1 that means p1 was waiting for 5 minutes of time to finish its task then we discuss about the p2 the turnaround time of p2 is 6 and the burst time is 2 so for 4 units of time it has to wait then for p3 turnaround time is 11 and burst time is 3 that means for 8 units of time it has to wait and then for p4 turnaround time is 9 and the burst time is 4 that means for 5 units of time it has to wait so what is the total waiting time total waiting time is uh, 8 plus 4 is uh, 12 12 plus 10 is 22 so total waiting time is 22 units uh, units and we were having total five processes if you divide 22 by 5 that means on an average every process has to wait for 4.4 units of time 
right so whenever we are designing any scheduling algorithm whether it is shortest job first whether it is first come first serve whether it is any other scheduling algorithm either it is round robin highest response ratio next our aim is main aim is to minimize the waiting time because if we can minimize the waiting time then we can enhance the efficiency of the system and if we can enhance the efficiency of the system then we can get better throughput again right so the whole game here in in case of in case of this scheduling algorithm is to minimize the waiting time and we are going to propose different scheduling algorithm to minimize the waiting time so now let us do one thing let me take one more example of um, first come first serve and then we are going to see what is the problem with the first come first serve algorithm and why do we actually introduce the other algorithms instead of first come first serve and the problem is called as convoy effect which we will see so let me take one more example of first come first serve and then uh, we will uh, uh, finish by uh, what is the problem with it and then how we can Im improve the first come first serve algorithm to, to introduce the next new algorithm okay